morning everybody, unless of course you are watching this video in the evening, in that case good evening and you're watching Time Travel TV and I'm going to start by giving a shout out to Boris Johnson. Hello Boris! And I'm also going to give a shout out to any person who has ever held the role of Prime Minister before because I think you are all watching, I know, I know you're watching David Cameron and Tony Blair, you're probably watching together actually I reckon. Anyway. So, the reason why I'm giving a shout out to all these Prime Ministers is because 300 years ago today, the first Prime Minister, Robert Walpole, moved into office. So I'm going to do a video today about the first Prime Minister, Robert Walpole. Now, the first thing you need to know about Britain's first Prime Minister is that he wasn't a Prime Minister. Back then, the word Prime Minister was only an insult. The role hadn't been invented. People would sneer behind Mr Walpole's back, going... Oh, he's the Prime Minister. <laughs> anyway, so this kind of stuck, and by 1905 it became official. The Prime Minister! Anyway, so he was Prime Minister, as I said. He moved into office on the 3rd of April, 1721. And he continued to be Prime Minister until the 11th of February, 1742, making him the longest serving Prime Minister in British history for 20 years and 314 days. He was Prime Minister under George I and George II. And what are some of the really important things that happened during his reign? Well, the first, the first was the South Sea Bubble. Now, the South Sea Bubble was very, very important. It was a company, part privately owned, part state owned, designed to reduce and consolidate the national debt. Because if you've seen my video about the founding of the Bank of England, you'd know the national debt was massive by this point. They also had a monopoly on trading in the uh, South America. So anyway, during the War for Spanish Succession, this company was flying, literally flying. Stocks are worth loads, except in 1720, it plummeted, and it plummeted so much, it really, really damaged the economy. So Robert Walpole had to pass an act called the Bubble Act, uh, which uh, prevented, uh, uh, the, made it illegal to have a joint stock company without a royal charter. So what happened next year, I hear you ask, screaming at your computer screens? Well, the answer is in 1737 with the Licensing Act. Now, Robert Walpole was worried about the theatres. He thought the theatres, the plays, were saying nasty things about him. So he censored it. He put the Licensing Act in to make sure they were saying nothing rude about the government. Another thing that happened during his uh, premiership was the... War of Jenkins' Ear. I don't know who Jenkins is or what was particularly special about his ear, but it was a war between Spain and Britain in which Britain did really badly, with 20,000 people dying and 407 ships being sunk. He was also, Robert Walpole, very isolationist. Didn't want to get involved in European politics. I suppose it was kind of Brexiteer in a way. Anyway, this led to the Industrial Revolution, many historians have argued. And... Britain's economy went off, off the scale, and massive. Anyway, um, this didn't last forever, though, because people started losing confidence in Mr Walpole. And in uh, 1742, there was a vote of no confidence in the government, and he was forced to resign. Taking over from Robert Walpole was Spencer Compton, who served for the next year and a half, and he was the second in a long line of many Prime Ministers, many of them noble and many of them not so noble. And that is the end of this video, and I hope you enjoyed it, because if you did, you please do subscribe to Time Girl TV, and I will see you next time. Cheerio!